Hi, Louise here. I'm going to talk to you about my book, The Idiot's Guide to Magic. And it's not The Idiot's Guide because people are idiots. It's, it, it's The Idiot's Guide to Magic because the idiot is me. And if I can get how this works, then anyone else can. And what this is, is learning to use magic in your everyday life to create the results that you would love to have in your life the happiness, the abundance, whatever it is you want in your life. So I'm going to start reading it and I'm going to read to you the introduction. So this is it, the introduction to the Idiot's Guide to Magic. By magic, I'm not talking about pulling a rabbit out of a hat or doing random tricks and illusions, although partly this book is how to see through the illusions that we create for ourselves. We live our lives in a sort of mist through which we always view life. It is a mist that consists of the way we perceive life, things, other people, ourselves, everything in fact. It is created from what psychologists call our conditioning. Our upbringing, culture, religion, education. We have these rules and regulations by which we think we have to abide. It is just the way things are. That's life. You have to accept, accept certain things because you can't change them. But the truth is that everything we perceive as being out there is something that we are projecting onto the world. Every minute of every day, we are creating our own experience of the world. It is not separate from us. The cool thing about that is that we can change the way we experience the world. We are not the victims of circumstance that we experience ourselves to be. Using a bit of magic, we can create a new reality for ourselves. It's a great and freeing thing to realise that we are responsible for what we create how we perceive things, what happens to us, etc. Lots of people don't want to accept that. It's too big and painful a pill for them to swallow. It hurts. It gets stuck in their throat. But that is only because they can't let go of the way that they think things are. If you can man up, or woman up and swallow that pill, it is immensely liberating because it gives you endless possibilities to change the current situation in your life and create a new and more rewarding experience of life and everything in it. So let's go on and begin at the beginning. And now I'm going to read my little bit about my life that I put in the book to start with before I get into the juice of it. My life. A bit about me to start with. I was born and raised in the beautiful southwest of England in the county of Devon in what was then the small seaside town of Paynton. There was nothing remarkable about my upbringing. Nice house, private school, holidays, picnics, horse riding, dancing, singing, a regular life. Dad worked in his office in town five and a half days a week, selling houses, insurance and generally helping people with their business. Mum was at home looking after my older sister, myself, Dad and our dog, Buster. She was a devoted mother who dusted and hoovered every day. Everything had to be spotlessly clean and underwear had to be decent in case you had an accident. A day without flicking the duster around her mantelpiece was a day she had wasted. 
It was the sort of life represented by the movie Pleasantville, where everyone lived according to a set of unwritten rules about what you could and could not do, and life ticked along. Undercurrents were ignored, and dramas were resolved by having a cup of tea. <laughs> School, work, meals, listening to the radio, and in the evening after dinner, television was the main event. Every week was pretty much the same routine, punctuated by dancing lessons, singing lessons and horse riding lessons. Nothing was ever out of place. I felt strangulated by this. I used to go to bed with what felt like a rock in my stomach, thinking there must be more to life than this. There must be something else. There has to be some sort of meaning to life. My soul was crying out for something more. I was filled with questions my parents and teachers could not answer. I asked and was told not to ask. I asked and I was told not to be stupid. I went to bed every night terrified. It was like living in some sort of nightmare from which I was hoping I would awake. I learned to distract myself and simultaneously get them to notice me by being entertaining and funny. I had a great voice and so I sang and everyone thought I was wonderful. It was a great way to get noticed in a world where everything just ran along and no one rocked the boat. Our private school was a convent run by Marist nuns. Oh boy, that was a challenge for me. At first, when I was really little, it gave my life some sort of meaning. I was all set to become a nun when I was around seven years of age. They handed out pamphlets at school about how to become a nun. And I was dead set keen to have a life devoted to God and wearing those groovy outfits. <laughs> But then as I got older and a bit more high-spirited, I was told that if I was naughty, I would burn in hellfire for eternity. At bedtime, I was so afraid. I would think about all the things that I had done that were a bit naughty. Then I would pray for forgiveness. Then I would imagine myself burning forever because I was too bad for God to be able to forgive me. It was like I was already in hell. In the daytimes being the little star and at night times being terrified of dying because I didn't want to burn up in hell. I told my mother about it. She didn't know what to tell me. Her advice was to think about something nice. She said, don't think about those things, Louise. Think about something nice. How could I think about something nice when I was preoccupied with burning in hell? It was a nightmare. This was the person I loved and looked to for guidance. She couldn't help her response. She didn't know any better. So life ticked along and throughout this time, I was preoccupied with the thought that there must be more to life than this. There had to be a meaning. There must be a reason but I was unable to find any answers from my parents, teachers or anyone else. I became a little bit rebellious. Went a bit hippie, had a flirt with illegal substances and met my first husband on an acid trip. True. We went off on a trip to the Far East together and ended up in Australia where we married when I was only 18 years old. We were obsessed with reading books by Gurdjieff and his student, Yuspensky. And it was during that period that I began to become aware of answers to my many, many questions about life, death, purpose, and so much more. Oops, excuse me. 
Upon our return to England, we joined something called the Centre for Human Communication, where we studied with Kevin Kingsland. His teachers were Dr. Ramurti Mishra and Christopher Hills, who I recently discovered studied with Bertram Russell and was a friend of Nehru. We learned about yoga, meditation, and about a system of personality typing based on the seven colours of the rainbow and the chakra system devised by Christopher Hills. So I began to develop my spiritual awakenings and awakening myself to what else life was about. I became a yoga teacher in my early 20s. At school, I had always been involved with music and singing and after a while, the call of music became strong and I ended up training to be an opera singer and had a moderately successful career as a freelance singer. During that time, I still remembered my training in yoga and communication and the nature of reality. I guess my whole life has been spent in this pursuit of the truth, either actively or on the back burner sometimes. During the years spent as a professional singer, I also managed the time to train as a spiritual healer. I did a diploma in crystal healing. I read countless books on all sorts of new age stuff, read about reincarnation, channeling, Reiki, tarot, but still there was something missing. My first marriage failed and I married again. I had a daughter to my first husband and a son to my second. The second husband was from Australia and he wanted to raise our son over there. So in 2001, we went to live in Australia where for some reason or another life slowly spiraled down the tubes. Nothing went right for us where anything was concerned. Work, money, relationship and family. In virtually every department, things were a bit unsatisfactory. Then one day, I found a book called The Magician's Way in a second-hand bookshop. I read it. My husband read it. We went together to an introductory talk about it and from there we both signed up for an intensive weekend course about it. I took the next step and signed up for a year-long training. I ended up doing two year-long trainings and other weekends and carried on with this work which has now become my life and what I'm totally passionate about. What happened during my training period though, is that my life disintegrated further and further until I was left with no alternative but to bite the bullet of transformation and get on with raising my consciousness. This consciousness raising business is not always an easy path because our egos don't like change. Our egos hang on to all the familiar beliefs and constructs that it believes are necessary in order to be viable and to survive. But it has been the thing I searched for, from the first words I heard uttered about magic, I knew this was the thing that would change my life. Within this work, I found the answers to all the questions I had when I was a little girl. I found the golden fleece. The myth of the quest for the golden fleece is a classic hero's quest tale where Jason had to journey to the unknown to acquire the fleece of a magical ram. The fleece is connected with magic in many folk traditions. So for me, it is symbolic of my quest into the unknown. My struggle with unknown terrain, unfamiliar and perilous circumstances to find the magical golden fleece of self-knowledge. I am not a remarkable person by any stretch of the imagination and I called this Idiot's Guide to Magic book, The Idiot's Guide to Magic, 
because the idiot is me, which I said at the beginning. I'm not a highly educated academic or sophisticated, and if I can get this stuff, anyone can. It is the stuff we were meant to come here and realise. It is the stuff that all religions and spiritual systems have at their core. It is alchemy. It is the stuff talked about by sages and wise people throughout the ages. It is the most important thing to understand in the whole world. It is self-knowledge. Know thyself. Isn't this what we have been urged to do by every mystical tradition? What I would like to share is my version of magic or alchemy, my step-by-step -step method to finding your way to the light of your truth, to seeing past the veil of illusion, to freeing yourself to enable your soul to create the life you would love to live and find the heaven on earth, which is your birthright. And I shall be going onwards to reading out chapter one at some point. So look out for that. Love from me.